Hi, welcome to Engineering. Today we are going to teach you how to calculate the areas and the volumes um, of a change of a road or pipeline using the final heights uh, from the calculations of the rise and fall or the height of instrument method. Uh, these two methods have separate videos on the channel that we explain. So first go through those videos before uh, we tackle this area of volume calculations. Alright, so this is the example I'm going to use. Uh, these are the points. Take a note, there's two um, benchmarks, the two different benchmarks at two different heights. Then we have changes from 0 to 200 of 20 meter changes each, as you can see according to the points. And then you can see we also have two inverted staff readings. And then as usual we have our back sides, intermediate sides and front sides. And then the first question we have is use the data above to determine the final heights for all stations by using the height of instrument method. And then please note that the use of any other method will result in a zero mark. Okay, so this is a specific exam question I had uh, that we could not use the rise and fall method. However, you can use the rise and fall um, in another scenario. So the first thing you'll do is you'll calculate your um, height instrument and calculate all your uh, final heights. So this is the normal way that you do it. You calculate your height of instrument, then your relative heights or reduced heights. Uh, you use a correction, which is your last reduced height minus your final height, and that is your correction. And apply it over the few setups, and then you get your final heights. Now I already put in the columns for our formation heights, our cut slash full, our area, and our volumes. All right, so the second question, or the second part of the question is the sewer has a height of 1,128.35 at point zero. It stops at a height of 1,126.25 at the 200 meter point. Uh, if I quickly go back, you can see there's a 200 meter point and the zero point. The stations are not included in the final or in the formation height. All right, so the first thing you need to do is calculate the heights of the formation line. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is at change zero, we have a height that was given to us. At change 200, we have a height that was given to us as well. So the easy way to do it is the height difference will be the highest point minus the lowest point, And you see that it's minus 2.1 because it goes down. It's a decline. And this is over a distance of 200 meters because we know the change is 200. Uh, now the sewer pipeline drops 2.1 meters over 200 meters. That's what we saw between those two values. So every change has a 20 or is 20 meters apart. So this means that there are 20 or the 10 changes. If you say 200 meters divided by 20 meters, and then you can say that the 2.1 meters over the 10 changes means that every change your height drops at 0 0.2 meters. All right, so you can see those are the two given values, and then every time you'll just minus 0 0.21 um, for each of our consecutive formation heights. You'll see the two inverted readings are not used because the inverted readings were done at the change, same change. So 40 meter one will do, but the inverted one we will not include in our formation heights. Uh, as I explained, minus 0 0.21 between each of the sections, um, between each of the changes. Now, our initial final heights was our natural ground level, while our new line, our formation heights, are the pipeline in this case. So, we need to calculate what's the difference between the height of the pipeline and the height of the NGL at different changes. So what we'll do is we'll say if cut equals the final height minus the formation height. You can ignore the negatives as these are absolute values. So this is not just the distance between the formation height and the final height. So we can stick to positive values here. So uh, even though we know that they change, if you go back, you can see in some cases it will be positive and some cases it will be negative. 
we can stick to absolute values. All right, then the third part of the second part of the question, uh, if the canal is 0 0.8 meters wide and the sides are vertical, calculate the volume of the excavation or fill as accurate as possible. Now, the sides are vertical and the width is 0 0.78 meters. So this means that our area will be pretty much a square because the two sides are vertical and the bottom part is uh, 0 0.8 meters wide. Uh, these vertical heights will be the difference between our final height and formation height or the cut as we have calculated in our previous table. So yeah, this is a very simple area but you might have cases where there's a triangle on either side of the square when in that case you have to say half breadth times height. Um, so I recommend you work out a formula for the area in terms of cut. I like to use D for depth so then you can say also even C and you say basically the cut times 0 0.8 in this case. It's the area of the section. So then this will be applied to each of the cuts so it'll be 1.293 times the area uh, times 0 0.78 to get your area. You basically do this for each of your cuts. Alright, so now we're going to calculate our volumes. So you can see this is the vol formula for the volume calculation. We have our chainage, which is D, um, times the area of the first chainage, area of the second chainage over 2. So if we put this 20 meters into the D, then we'll see that uh, we have the 20 and 2 that cancel each other to get 10 in front and then we have a standard formula for our volume. So now you'll see that the area, uh, you'll notice that obviously the first row and the last row do not have values because they're the benchmarks uh, but all the other values have formation heights, cuts and areas except the second row does not have volume because you need first area and a second area for the formula. So this volume is the volume between the two, um, basically between the first change and the second change of between the road and the national ground level. So you won't have a volume for the first one since there's no change to compare it to. But then you'll see just as the examples are given, you add these two areas times 10 and you'll get your volume. You'll do this for all of your rows up until the second last row. Alright, so just some basic explanations on inclines and declines. Um, your slope is this gradient over here and your rise is the vertical distance that I uh, explained to you now now and your run is your horizontal distance. Inclination is the angle at which a straight line or plane is inclined to another. Oh, and the gradient is the degree of the slope. So when calculating these, you have different scenarios. For example, when you work with slope, it is your rise over your run. This is the case where you have two heights. You can simply say the one height minus the other one uh, divided by the distance times 100 and you can get a percentage. Uh, then what you can also do is you can work with a height and an incline of 2%. So this means that this height um, over a 200 meter section will um, at a 2 meter 2% uh, incline will result in um, that height at the end. Then you can calculate that. Uh, you can also do it for different changes in between. Now I just want to show you an example of a decline as well. A decline is when you go from a higher point to a lower point over a distance. Uh, the same formula applies. It's a very simple formula to work out. Um, but yes, there is an example. Yeah, you slope over the rise of a run times 100. Follow the steps of algebra and you'll get your um, slope. Alright, then the last example is when you're working with gradient or inclination. Uh, when you've got a 1 to 200, then if you have a 250 meter run, then it'll be 250 meters to 200, which will mean there's a 1 to 25, so rise is 1.05 meters. Or you, what you can do is you can say 1 to 200 equals 0 0.005 meters per meter. Uh, then you can use that to work out your different changes. 
All right, so these areas and volumes, it's just a very um, simple calculation, it's straightforward once you understand the concepts. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe to the channel, and thank you very much for watching.